Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. All right, grade nine. So um, this is one of the last of the um, non-contact uh, forces that do exist. Okay. So we uh, looked at, of course, um, non-contact forces. We looked at gravitational forces or force rather. We looked at magnetic force last week and um, non-contact forces that yet again are also known as field forces. All right. So <clears throat> electrostatic force is the third one. Okay. Now in grade eight, we did learn about um, charges and we learned in grade eight that like charges when we when we come we put two like charges against each other or near to each other they obviously repel all right just like mag just like magnets as well uh like uh poles also repel each other uh but opposite charges just like opposite ends of a magnet also attract opposite charges also attract each other or attract towards each other or one another now the same thing with electrical charges electrical charges are either positive or they are negative okay naturally so also that um, unlike electrical charges will also attract each other so let's have a look at the work that is done by friction now friction we've heard this term being tossed around a lot in or we should have had it heard it tossed around a lot um, of course if you rub your hand uh, or your finger like I'm sitting at my desk and I take my finger and I rub it hard into the desk I will find my finger starting to get a bit warmer okay because <clears throat> that's friction me rubbing up friction obviously two objects rubbing up against each other quite fast or quickly creates a lot of heat obviously energy that you feel but that is the like the work that is done by friction okay now when you take any two materials together which is the work of friction and you take certain materials together and, and you rub them together quite fast or just keep rubbing them together charges do develop all right they do develop and charges develop because there's either a gain of electrons or there is a loss of electrons okay but when or with these uh, charges or with these electrons that are transferred only negative electrons which electrons are negative only negative charges move so only electrons can move the positive charges which are called protons all right protons they cannot move protons do not get transferred only electrons are free to move and to be transferred between materials okay so Maybe some of you have taken off a jersey, if you've had a certain jersey of a certain type of material, and um, it maybe it's in the weather or the air is very dry. Okay, sometimes when you take off a jersey, depending on the material, the jersey will make like a crackling noise. Okay, if it's in particularly dry weather. In other words, there's no moisture in the air. All right, there's no humidity. Right? When you hear someone say it's humid or it's humidity, there's actually a lot of moisture in the air. But when there's no moisture, it's a very hot, dry day, and you pull off your jersey, there will be like a crackling noise or something. Okay? Um, <clears throat> th those obviously um, tell us one thing, that our jersey or that material is quite, um, I wouldn't say heavily charged, but it's got some type of electrical charge on it. Alright? Uh, also... Uh, getting your hair um, to a um, getting your hair to stand uh, on end when rubbing it with a plastic comb. All right, if you must rub your hair with a plastic comb and your hair stands up, sometimes that could be as a result of there's actually some electrical charge there. Another better example is rubbing your ruler on your hair, your shatterproof little ruler there. Uh, you rubbing it quite um, hard and fast on your hair and then seeing uh, laying it uh, just above your paper page in your book and you'll find that the page gets attracted or lifted to the ruler even if you put it down on the page and lift your ruler up slightly then the um, page will lift with it because of the charges that exist on the page and on the 
uh, ruler that transfer does tend to happen there. Okay. So to continue, the charged objects which is in that electrostatic system, they do possess something called potential energy. Okay. Now energy comes from the work that is done by friction, okay, which would either be you actually rubbing your ruler on your hair and then moving it to the page, or you actually taking off or pulling off your jersey or actually pulling a comb through your hair. That's all counts or constitutes as work uh, done. Now objects that have like charges both negative or both positive obviously we know those charges will repel each other but the unlike charges in other words one positive and one negative or vice versa either way same thing they will obviously attract towards each other now in nature this type of st electrostatic system actually does exist naturally okay evolving of course the development of thunder clouds now when thunder clouds develop okay Air and water particles, they rub up against one another and they develop charges, All right? As a result of that, we have lightning, okay? Which is a very powerful discharge of the static electricity caused by air and water particles rubbing up against each other or one another. Now, lightning, just to talk a bit about lightning in its natural um, little context, is that it can be that spark of lightning can be more than a kilometer long okay it's just it's very quick so we don't really get to see it but like for um, it's if we do see it in the distance and we see that um, obviously for it for us to see it like as we see it it's gonna have to be quite long the droplets of water and ice they will rub up against each other which would uh, be in a, inside a storm cloud and obviously the reason why they rub up against each other is because they are moving up and down due to air of course okay so air currents that do move inside the uh, the cloud they are called uh, drafts all right so drafts this word d r a u g t h okay refers to air inside the clouds okay the storm clouds or the thunder clouds or whatever you want to um, call it and um, down drafts all right there's also another term given to it drafts or down drafts but they obviously cause the movement of the water and the ice droplets or the droplets of water and the ice okay because obviously the higher you go in the sky the cold it gets right so that's why uh, for example my mom would always say when I'm going on a hike always take a jacket with you never know how cold it gets on the mountain I kept myself smart one time thought she thought she didn't know what she was talking about guess what she did okay the higher you go above the ground or above sea level the cold it actually really gets okay now the movement of the down drafts in the clouds all right, do cause the electrons to gather near the bottom of the clouds. Once it gathers at the bottom of the clouds, it becomes very negatively charged. Okay, then the movement of the updrafts carries the positive charges upwards to make the top of the cloud positively charged. So at the top of the cloud, of the updrafts, you got you you got a you got your positive protons, and at the bottom, because of the downdrafts, it's carried all the electrons down to the bottom of the cloud. Now, if these charges do become large enough, electrons will flow. Now, electrons will flow to do what? To try and neutralize the difference in potential energy between the two parts. And to draw that demonstration, all right, I'm going to draw it on the next slide. Okay, so what I do have here is the origin of lightning type drawing, okay? And obviously, you see the yellow represents the lightning sparks, and um, obviously we got the clouds there. Um, some little landscape in there that I managed to include for decor purposes. Okay, but uh, what basically happens is that we've got a cloud um, to air lightning, which is over here, and then of course we've got cloud to cloud lightning, all right, which can happen, and of course we've got cloud to ground uh, lightning. Okay, so when we see a huge spark that's caused by the flow of electrons as lightning, okay, that is obviously um, us actually seeing this flow of charge visible to us. All right, 
What we are seeing in the, is the air that's been heated by the flow of electrons until it actually glows and produces light. Okay, hence the light part in lightning. Okay. What we are, no, I, I, I mentioned that part, yes. So, this is the same effect as an electric current heating a filament in a bulb. All right, so in those little circular spherical bulbs, we do see um, uh, filaments, um, of course, and that, that uh, filament, obviously, when you switch the switch on, electric current flows through it, and then we see light, okay? So, that literally... Um, Synthetic, man-made, we actually see that in lightning, which is obviously nature at its best. The sudden expansion, therefore, of the air as it heats causes the sound of thunder. Okay, so let me say that again, just so I understand how thunder and lightning works. The sudden expansion of the air as it heats causes the sound of thunder. Lightning may spark from a cloud to the air around it as we see the cloud-to-cloud the -cloud lightning, all right, uh, from the top to the bottom of the clouds or from the cloud to an open object on the ground, which of course we hear um, about each year when there is winter, uh, rain, storms, etc., when uh, thunder and lightning is obviously quite evident. We obviously hear of a certain amount of deaths that are caused by lightning. Okay, but obviously there are a list of things that we can do to protect ourselves. Okay, because there is a obviously lightning is a very powerful discharge of static electricity, basically. All right, or static charge. All right. So one of the things that obviously we can do to take precautions so that we are not struck by lightning. Okay, one of those things, of course. Well, let me use a better color. This is gray. It's quite dark. All right use a clear color there, is never stand under trees. Okay, never stand under trees during a thunderstorm. All right, as trees are often the highest points in the area and they uh, then conduct lightning to the ground. Lightning has struck many trees and we often see that the tree is burning from the inside out. All right, so lightning uh, can do damage to some trees. If you cannot get away from the trees, stand where they are lowest in height. Right, never stand next to metal objects. Okay, because they can conduct that electricity. All right, stand under. If you can't get away from trees, stand on where they are lowest in height, because the lightning probably might not reach you. It might not, especially if the trees are high. Okay, but always never look to stand under a tree if there's lightning okay a lot of people when they see lightning because um, it is not something to like say that you're not you that hey i'm not scared of it it is something to actually be quite scared of um of course because you know it's deadly okay um some people they get under the tree because it's the first because they see lightning and they see and they, they just run to a tree and they freeze they just stand still because again they're scared if they step out from under the tree lightning might get them of course so people freeze out of fear all right but if you can avoid it never ever stand close to a tree okay stay out of fresh water okay stay out stay stay out of water so puddles um pools don't go swimming in lightning all right if you're swimming in fresh water get out okay because water will conduct electricity very very it conducts electricity very very well okay uh if you are in an open area that's spread apart all right if you are in the open area with others okay let me read let me actually say that correctly i fumbled over my words there if you are in an open area okay if you are in an open area, okay? If you're in an open area with people spread apart, because if lightning catches one person, you all shock and possibly all end up uh, not surviving and crouch down. Crouch down, okay? Keeping your feet very close together. 
okay keep your feet close together okay then by crouching as low as you can possible okay uh, also when you are crouching don't put your hands on the ground and don't lie down okay but by crouching uh, you are as low as possible of course wrap your arms around your legs to offer a safe path for the charge to the ground in other words the charge will hit the ground more than what it will reach you by having your feet close together there is less chance of a current flowing from one to the other by having your feet close together so hope you all understand that the chances of this happening to us probably is very low but this is just if you get caught you know anything can happen the last one is if you are talking on a telephone or cell phone or landline phone a lightning strike could cause hearing damage okay if you have an iPod or cell phone at your ear during a storm electrical forces could be attracted to the device and affect your hearing so if lightning if you're in a storm and there's thunder and lightning basically avoid talking on the phone okay avoid talking on the phone as the lightning with uh, with all the electrical forces involved may cause hearing damage okay so, so you want to stay away from that and that's all the time we have for all today great nights thanks so much for joining me on our lesson finishing the final uh field force or non-contact force which is a uh, which was rather electrostatic force uh stay tuned for next week's topic